to my video on rectangular prism and cylinder practical problems. So today we're going to look at word problems that are rectangular prisms and cylinder. And we need to decide which formula we're going to use, volume or surface area. So we're first going to look at some keywords. So we are going to sort the keywords below into volume and surface area. So the first word is cover. And that is surface area. And then we have hold, which is volume. OK, capacity is also volume. And capacity is like, you know, the gym has a capacity of 1,000 people. That means only 1,000 people can fit in that gym at one time to meet the fire code. So decorate, that is surface area. And fill is volume. And wrap is surface area. So notice the volume words, hold, capacity, fill, it's all talking about the inside of the shape. And surface area, Cover, decorate, wrap is all talking about the outside surfaces of the shape. Okay, so we're going to look for those keywords when we do the word problems. So let's move on and look at our steps here. So our steps are read the problem, determine the shape and formula by underlining or highlighting keywords, substitute, plug in the numbers, and work out the problem solve. So here are our formulas. We have V equals pi r squared h for cylinder. And we have the surface area is 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And the rectangular prism, we have V equals length times width times height for the volume. And for the surface area, we have 2 lw plus 2 lh plus 2 wh. Now, when we look at the word problems, if you want to get a highlighter, you can just pause the video. But if not, you can just underline. So it's up to you. Okay, welcome back. If you grabbed a highlighter, now let's dive right into it. Determine the formula and then find the volume or surface area of the figure. So, how much water can a fish tank hold if the length was 46 inches, the width was 14 inches, and the height was 22 inches? So I'm going to get my highlighter, and I see a keyword there, hold. And I see length was 46 inches and width was 14 inches. Make sure you're underlining or highlighting. And the height was 22 inches. Now, I can figure out the shape one of two ways, um, usually. Um, sometimes you can tell by what it is, fish tank, but I mean, fish tanks could sometimes be in the shape of a cylinder, so I can't really tell definitely there. But because I have a length, a width, and a height, I can tell that this is a rectangular prism. And I can also tell that it's volume because of the word hold. So I'm going to write down what I have. Length is 46, width is 14, and height is 22. Okay, and we said we're going to use the volume formula, so if I wasn't sure, I'd flip over to the other page. But I'm pretty sure volume is length times width times height. And the length is 46, the width is 14, and the height is 22. So I'm going to multiply those three numbers together. And when I multiply those three numbers together, I get 14,168 inches cubed. And I'm going to circle my answer, and I'm done. Okay, let's move on to the second one. John wants to paint a barrel in his riding arena with spray paint. Each barrel measures three and a half feet tall and has a radius of one and a quarter feet. How much spray paint will he need to cover the barrel? So I'm going to highlight barrel, 
and right off the bat barrel I can tell it's a cylinder. Each barrel measures three and a half feet tall and has a radius of one and a quarter feet. How much spray paint will he need to cover? So I can underline spray paint there. Okay, so now I write down the information that I have. I know it's going to be um, surface area, so I can write the formula first. Surface area equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. And when I look at the formula, I know I need a radius and a height, so I always like to write that down. So the radius is 1 and a quarter, which I know 1 quarter is 0.25, so 1.25. And the height is 3 and a half feet, and I know that 1 half is 0.5, so it's 3.5. Now, I'm going to bring down the numbers and take out the symbols and letters. So SA equals, I'm going to bring down the 2. Pi is 3.14. And the radius is 1.25 squared. And I'm going to box it in. Now, when I type this in to my calculator, 2 times 3.14 times 1.25, hit the x squared button. I'm going to hit equals after I do that. And remember, if I don't have the x squared button, I'm going to type in 1.25 times 1.25 when I get to this part. Okay, plus, bring down the 2. Pi is 3.14. The radius is 1.25. And the height is 3.5. Okay, box it in. And I've already done the calculations. So this part is 9.8125 plus this part, which is 27.475. Okay, I'm going to add that up. 37.2875. And we're going to practice rounding to the nearest tenth. I know the directions didn't say to, but I want to practice because some of the worksheets and things that we do will ask you to round to the nearest tenth. So underline the tenths place, draw an arrow to the right, and if it's five or above, I give it a shove, so it's 37.3 uh, feet squared because it's area. Now remember when you're rounding, if it if you're rounded to the nearest tenth, you can only round to the nearest tenth if there's a number in the hundreds place. If there isn't a number in the hundreds place, like right here, um, then I would just leave my number whatever it is. So sometimes your answer can be a whole number when it says round to the nearest tenth. Okay, now, um, if you want to practice typing these in after the notes are over, you can just come back and Type this in and see if you get this number, and type this in and see if you can get this number, because it's very good practice to do that. Okay, moving on to number three. A rectangular board game is 14 inches wide, 18 inches long, 2 inches high. If I give the game to my niece for her birthday, how many square inches of wrapping paper will I need? So I automatically know it's a rectangular prism, and now I have my width, my length, and my height and it says how many square inches so right there that tells me surface area and wrapping paper also tells me surface area so we're going to write the formula s a and i would look at my formula sheet and find the rectangular prism one so it's 2lw plus 2lh plus 2wh and now i want to write down what i have so i have a width of 14, 18 inches long, so that's the length, and two inches high, that's the height. Okay, now I'm going to bring down the twos and take out the letters and put the numbers. So bring down the two times the length, which is 18, times the width, which is 14. Box it in. Plus two times the length, 18, times the height, which is two. Box it in.
plus 2 times the width times the height. Box it in. Now, at this point, I would use my calculator to do this calculation, and it's 504 plus. This calculation would be 72. And the last calculation is 56. Now, my last step, since there are addition signs between all of these, I'm just going to add them up. So 632 inches squared because this is area. Okay, uh, let's move on to the next one. A gas station's underground storage tank measures 30 feet tall and has a diameter of 10 feet. How much fuel can the tank hold? Okay, we have a storage tank, so we can pretty much assume it's going to be a cylinder, but then it's definitely given away uh, when we have a height and a diameter. And the hold tells us its volume, so I'm going to, I would find the volume formula for a cylinder on my formula sheet, which is pi times radius squared times height. Okay, and now I'm going to write down what I have. So I have a height of 30, but I don't have a radius, and I need a radius for my formula. So I take the diameter and I divide by 2. So what's 10 divided by 2? It's 5. Good. So now I'm going to um, replace each of these with the numbers. So pi is 3.14. The radius is 5, so I'm going to hit squared. And the height is 30. Now, when I type this into my calculator, okay, I'm going to hit 3.14 times 5. Hit the x squared button times 30. And remember, if you don't have the x squared button, you're going to type in 5 times 5 times 30 when you're doing these on your own. Okay, I type this in, hit equals, and I get 2,355 feet cubed. Okay, and now we're down to our very last problem. So, uh, once again, we're going to read the problem. Underline keywords, container in the shape of a cube will be filled completely with sand. So we have cube and filled. And the cube tells us it's a rectangular prism. Just with the cube, remember um, all this, the length, the width, and the height will all be the same. So the container has an edge length of 6 inches. So that means the length, width, and height will all be 6. What is the exact number of cubic inches? So there's a volume word needed to completely fill the container. There's another volume word. Okay, so I'm going to find the formula on my formula sheet for volume of a rectangular prism and its length times width times height. And then I'm going to write down my length, which is 6, my width, which is 6, and my height, which is, you guessed it, 6. Okay, so V equals the length times width times height are all the same, so 6 times 6 times 6. And it doesn't really matter which order the 6s are in. Get it? Okay, bad joke. And 6 times 6 times 6 is 216 inches cubed. So, remember when you're doing these word problems, look for keywords, determine surface area, or volume, and then figure out what the shape is. Remember, squared is area, and cubed is volume. That concludes our notes on rectangular prism and cylinder practical problems. I hope you have a great day.